Welcome to Love and Money Secrets TV. I'm your host, Dame Lillian Walker, and today I'm coming to you with kind of a different message. It's a, a download that I received and it's... upon me and I don't even as I came to share this message with you it was it's like this impulse that's pushing me to share this message even though I don't even really know what it was that I was going to say and what I kept on hearing spirit say was just you know show up and we'll give you the words and what was revealed to me in the last 24 hours was really profound I've just shared it with like one or two people it's still uh, places me in a in a spot of awe um, because I don't really have any answers to a lot of questions that I have and others have and all I can do is really place myself in this position of, of surrender and of uncertainty where um, I just have to constantly keep on going back to the well so to speak and the well of course is just getting in that relaxed state, getting myself into theta, and then just showing up, becoming one with the one with the divine, and asking God to reveal whatever it is that the divine wants me to know in this moment in time. And so the thing that came to me yesterday, there were there's actually a lot of stuff I just don't remember at all. It's, it's too much. But one of the things that really popped out for me was, was um, the revelation of this collective consciousness and it was identified as the 198 exegetical council which sounds kind of like a big mouthful and when I first had this revelation um, it came to me first as just the 198 and I was like what's the 198 that's kind of a strange number as far as I'm concerned and so what they revealed to me first of all was that they are the 198. And the 198 said to me that, that you are one with the one and you complete the trinity and you are the nine and we are the nines. And so as I sat listening to that and I said, you complete the trinity, like, what do you mean that I'm the nine? And as I just kind of asked, what do you mean by I complete the Trinity, that I am the nine? And so as I sat there and waited, then I saw the one and the eight in the 198. I saw the one and the eight come together to form a nine. Then I clearly saw the two nines. And then I saw myself, like on me was the number nine. So that's three nines which completes the trinity. If you do nine times three, if you know anything, uh, and I don't claim to know a lot about numerology, but I do know the number significance between one through nine, uh, one to zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then zero, 10 being the completion number. And you know, the, the, a little bit about Tesla's three, six, nine, and the secrets of the universe, and the golden mean, and golden ratio, and Fibonacci sequencing, and so forth. So I wasn't even thinking about any of that. I was just going, oh, the nine and the nine, and I'm the third nine. I complete the trinity? I'm like, what? As you know, when it comes to these things, None of this makes sense. So, you know, you you have to just keep on surrendering and keep on asking. So I said, okay, I am, okay, I'm going to believe you if you're saying that I'm the Trinity, that I complete the Trinity, and that together we make the three the three nines. And then I realized, oh, you go nine nine nine. That makes twenty seven. Twenty seven seven. Obviously seven plus two, you go get back to nine again, right? And so I thought, whoa, it's like a full circle, <laughs> which now I'm actually, as I'm speaking this to you, I'm recognizing full circle, not as a, not as a one dimensional circle like this, it's full circle as in a sphere. I'm like, oh, I get it. My brain doesn't get it, but kind of my inner being kind of gets it. So I'm understanding more about this concept of wholeness and integrity and the magnitude of what 
you know, God, the creator, is trying to reveal to not only me, but to all of you. And so one of the things that was revealed to me was that, uh, make no mistakes, um, this is... This is, uh, this is truth, this is where you lie, this is where you stand. And if you're watching this video right now, um, you are the nine also. And that means that you complete the Trinity. And this video probably won't be viewed by very many, many people, but um, I know that I, I was um, impressed upon the fact that those who see the video, you're being called from your waking state and from your sleeping state to find this video because you knew that before you came into body form. And so you will find this message and you're, you're going to know, oh, yeah, this resonates. Not only does it resonate with me, it sounds familiar. And I, mean, I kind of re I have a vague memory of this. It's kind of like a vague knowing, but it's not an intellectual knowing. It's a different kind of knowing from a deeper place of knowing. So if you are watching this video, you are in all likelihood a, a light worker of some sort, a light seed, a dimensional being that is called to be part of the energy that is here to increase the consciousness of all beings. People, animals, plants, all the energies because as we increase our vibrational frequency, as we stay in embodied more in an energetic bubble of love, and when I do mean bubble, I don't mean a, a little compacted bubble, I mean a, a, a large spherical bubble that extends outside of what science measures as nine meters, 30 meters, whatever the case might be, but an expansive consciousness that we with conscious intent, we expend out to include not only our cities, our states, our countries, our continents, but it covers not just the globe, but it goes beyond, beyond Earth. It touches all the galaxies, all the cosmos, you know, throughout to as far out as we possibly can imagine or fathom. So again, I don't have all the answers. I, um, I'm just telling you what was imparted on me and some of it's being given to me as we speak. I did write a couple notes uh, of a few things because I just, when I get these downloads, some of them are so packed with so much information. I oftentimes say to them, um, how am I supposed to remember? There's so much detail. How am I supposed to remember this all? Um, it seems like it's impossible. And they tell me just to relax that whenever I need it, it will pop up. And one of, the, one of the things that they revealed to me, this collective of 198, was that I am to guide people to this temple of wisdom. Um, and this is a place of healing. This is a place of healing not only for physical, but the physical traumas, physical disease, physical illness, physical, any physical pain, that you have is even even financial blocks that you have. If you have if you have any kind of disturbance in any area of your life, financial, relational, spiritual, um, emotional, psychological, doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. It's all tied to your soul at the deeper root of not just you in this lifetime, but your soul which has existed for eons. And so the thing is that because we are souls embodied in this 3D house called a, a body that our parents named, gave a certain name for identification purposes, um, we carry ancestral energies that go into our DNA, uh, coming from our maternal and paternal ancestry. And it's not limited just to the carnal ancestry. There's it's an energy that goes beyond. And so as we are, we are at the most precious time in history of humankind. And we chose to be here at this particular place and time. And so I would urge you, it doesn't matter what your belief system is, but I would urge you to call upon, call upon Jesus, call upon Mother Mary, call upon your angels. Did you know that there's over 300 verses in the Bible, in the Old Testament, which is the same for the Christian Bible, Catholic Bible, the Jewish Bible. In the Old Testament, 
There are, it starts with Genesis, it goes to my favorite Italian, Malachi, which is Malachi in Hebrew. But there's over 300 verses that deal exclusively with angels. And they're there at your beck and call. And so I urge you to call upon Jesus, call upon Mother Mary, call upon your angels. I call upon all the energetic forces. I don't care what plane, dimension, density, plane of existence that they are in. If they're willing to bring in a love vibration to heal and to uplift and to empower uh, the bodies, the people, the beings that are here now, then, and um, that has resulted in some pretty, pretty profound revelations, which I have some videos that, um, that I recorded right after some of these experiences. I had like a couple weeks ago, a Friday, where it was just, I just had sign after sign after sign after sign. It was like a waterfall of signs. I couldn't turn anywhere. It seemed like without, I kept on getting insights and signs, and then I would, I would see things with my physical eyes and have a deeper sense of understanding. And then I would see these other places and I would see angels and I would see these little fairies and just all sorts of things that I could have never in my wildest imagination. I don't, my imagination's not that creative to come up with all of this stuff. So these are profound revelations with really deep seated um, meanings that as, as I really don't know the meaning at the face of it, but in the right time at the right place, I've been told that as, as we're sleeping, we've been receiving these light code activations, these dimensional overlays, which I'm starting to get my arms around and having a firmer grasp. I just had a session with a gal uh, just a few days ago, and we were just doing a neuro health reset for pain. And what cut, the first time this has ever happened to me, during the neuro health reset, she had this prana light activation because her and I both saw during, because I tap into your autonomic nervous system when I do a neuro reset with you one-on-one. -on -one. And so what I saw was this three inch uh, light tube that went through her from her feet all the way, all the way up. And it, was, uh, it wasn't like a solid plastic. It was like a solid laser light that was three inches it was like a three inch luminescent tube. And so what I'm, and then I saw her feet in her particular case, I saw her feet really entrenched, grounded into the earth. It's almost like it, they melted into the earth and where her feet almost became one with the earth. It was a really cool um, visual. I wish I were an artist like my daughter so I could do a painting so you guys could see what I saw because it was really, really quite magnificent. Um, so all these things are happening and I'm, I'm, I just want you to know that if you're watching this video, this means that you're next in line to receive things greater than this even. You'll have your unique perspective and set of revelations that are going to be given to you. And so I want to urge you to get into that quiet space, to get relaxed, to lower your heart rate. If you don't know how to get into Theta State, watch my Theta State video. Get into that Theta State. Forget about calling it meditation, prayer, whatever it is. You're getting into a relaxed state where you're putting your ego and your brain and your memories to one side, and you are just being in the void, and you're one with the one. You're acknowledging the presence of God, the presence of I am, the presence of the Lord, the presence of the great creator, Gaia, doesn't matter. Labels are labels. As humans, we need labels. In the energetic field, there is no such thing as labels. We're just one soul energy relating to another soul energy, irrespective of age, gender, political, religious. All that stuff is just man-made stuff. And so just recognize that you are one with the one. You embrace one with the one. And in an act of surrender and letting go, say, yes, I'm willing to receive. Reveal to me, you know, how good can this get? What else is it that you have for me? What gifts that I am unaware of? What, what can you activate for me now that I am not aware of, that I can use for the greater good of all? If it's the greater good of all, you're going to get benefit from it, and they're all going to get um, a benefit from it. Um, you're going to notice that your, not only your, 3D, your obviously six, five senses, but your 8D neurosomatic senses and your spiritual senses were, are going to start to be activated where you're going to have increased telepathy, increased 
um, clair, clairsentience, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairgustatory, clair, even your um, sense of smell, you will, where, where no one else will smell smoke in, oftentimes in these moments. And all these things have a specific meaning. So you can turn it back over, reveal to me what it is that it means. You can Google it and start to kind of get an idea what other people have realized. You know, for me, I know sometimes to smell smoke, sometimes, even though my ancestors, my, well, my grandfather used to smoke for, I guess, until he was 44 and then he quit cold turkey. He, he has an incredible story. I'll have to do another video on that. But, um, so perhaps, but I never smelled smoke on him before, but I know that that's for me a sign of ancestral beings that are in my midst. And it's been revealed to me that I have an like a very large number of um, healing energies that are around, around me, but that's not surprising because I call them in, I welcome them in. And I have some um, special groups, if you will, that are very predominant uh, that I'm always talking with all the time. And I know some of this stuff may sound kind of like way out there for some of you, and that's fine. Uh, if it sounds way out there, take whatever resonates with you and just take whatever aspect of what I'm sharing with you here that um, resonates with you and leave the rest. But make no mistakes, you did not find this broadcast by accident. And today is happens to be June 30th. July 5th, we are having a lunar eclipse which is a, it's a pretty big deal. A, a lot of energy is going to be running throughout the entire uh, universe. It's not just limited to the earth. There's all these planets. I'm not, I don't really know anything about astrology. I'm astrology ignorant. I don't, I barely know my sign. I couldn't tell you my, my three kids. I couldn't tell you what sign there were. Um, I could tell you my mother's sign and my dad's sign. I couldn't tell you my brother's sign. So I'm ignorant in that area. But I do, I am highly sentient and uh, I do receive a lot of downloads. It's been quite a few downloads. And right now it's at an, at, a, at an all time high, which is very exciting. It's very, um, sometimes you're like, what the heck, what am I supposed to make of this? Oftentimes that's the case. It's like, what am I supposed to make of this? And then you have, I had somebody today who, they had this very unusual circumstance where they went to a lab to get some testing done and yada, yada, yada. And, um, and then lo and behold, some of, some of what had been revealed to me, again, this is for the greater good of all. This is not just for me. This is for me to share with you. And so, of course, I came into contact with someone who had some strange roundabout things that were happening that did not make any sense. It was causing a lot of, of confusion, a lot of upset, and a lot of, of um, just discordant energies. And then more was revealed, part of that, the collective of 198, the exegetical council. I had to look up that word because I'm like, I don't ever remember using that word. Um, so I had to look up exegetical and exegesis. Uh, it sounds like Jesus, but it's G-E-S-I-S. -S. So exegetical, E-X-E-G-E-T-I-C-A-L. So I had to look it up. So I encourage you to look it up too. So this collective body of energies, they are here to complete, to be complete with you, to form the Trinity. So you form a, you, it's funny because I've been seeing a lot of triangles lately. So, and then as you may or may not know, the Merkaba is two, ups, two upside down pyramid triangles, which together they make the Merkaba and that has an energy in and of itself. So I know that somehow everything is tied together and related. So as more is revealed to me, I'll, I'll do my best to share. It's impossible for me to do a video for each and every one of these because it's just, it's sometimes like drinking out of a fire hose. You only need so much water to satiate your, your thirst and it's like, phew. but I have been confirmed, reaffirmed and assured. They say rest assured that even though your conscious memory doesn't remember it all, it's all in you. That's part of a, apparently the dimensional overlay. When that's put upon you, it's something that's activated as you need it. Then whatever codes that are in there are there for you, for you to use from 30 seconds to up to, I think they said up to two hours. 
um, something like that. So I hope this video, this broadcast right now finds you in good health. It finds you in good spirits. It finds you in happiness and joy in um, bliss and exuberance. If this is for some reason finding you in a place where you're at a quandary, where you're seeking answers, where you're praying for results, if you're wanting to morph, transmute, change, if you want to alchemize, if you want to mold the clay of your energetic life and turn some things that are unwanted into the wanted, then you're at the right time, at the right place, with the right people, because I am here to help people get into heart. First of all, to get your heart open so you have an open heart. So next stage is to get into heart coherence and brain coherence. When you connect your heart coherence with your brain coherence, pow, that's where you can go on steroids and really quantum mold. You're now, you now have your hands on this is little. I should get a big steering wheel because you really are now with your hands on the steering wheel of your life. And you can basically turn lead into base gold. So your life can go from being a heavy lead into a beautiful shiny piece of gold. I was going to say kind of like this chain. It's gold. It's not too shiny um, here, but maybe the edge of the heart you can see. How, how appropriate. I didn't even think of that. I'm talking about heart coherence and I'm talking about a steering wheel and I'm just now realizing I've always had an affinity for <laughs> circles. Um, so anyhow, here it is. So getting that heart and that brain coherence. So powerful. If you haven't yet read Dr. Joe's book on becoming supernatural or how to break the habit of being yourself, now is the time for you to start. Dive in deep, read, review, and apply the book. Purchase the book both in written form, get the paperback, get the Kindle form. Choose, decide today that this is the day that you are gonna take back your own power. You are not gonna be a victim of circumstance. You are not gonna be a victim of what, whatever any large organization is uh, trying to manipulate you into whatever their agenda, hidden or not, is. You can take back the reins and you can really create a beautiful, magnificent life. And even in the face of something unwanted, you'll see in some of, I think there, I think it was in the Breaking the Habit of Being, no, it was in um, Becoming Supernatural, one of the videos where I actually showed how I had, I had so many. Um, 2019 was a magical year. It was a year where I was really tested as a metaphysician and an alchemist. And people kept on calling me that. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm not. I'm just, I'm just a girl. I'm just a little molecule of a small potato of spuds in a bag of really big potatoes because I am blessed to be, have known some pretty incredible people. I seem to be a magnet for the most incredible people in the world, including you. If you're watching this video, you are part of those amazing beings. So I want to thank you for tuning and tapping into this. Make no mistake, and don't make a mistake, no mistake. This is on purpose, on time. And I would love to hear back from you. Please place in the comments. If you, if you are starting to notice either incongruencies in your place, the places that you fre frequently routinely go by and all of a sudden things are different or changed or, um, you know, like the person that I talked to today, the lab sent her across the parking lot to another lab company, different name, different type of testing that was supposed to be done, and she got there and the thing didn't exist. And so I can talk um, a whole lot about that. In fact, we had Dr. Cynthia Sue Larson, who was on the Bottom Line Show Live. If you go to the iTunes link and look on the Bottom Line Show Live, or just Google Dr. Cynthia Sue Larson, on the Bottom Line Show Live and um, reality shifting or parallel universe or quantum jumping, you'll see what that physicist talks about. She's an amazing human being, lives in Berkeley. And um, that'll kind of give you an insight as to what's potentially going on in your reality. So I'm excited because you can impact and improve not only your life, but as you gain confidence and start to more consciously do that for yourself, then you're able to consciously do that more 
for those who are around you. And you are quantum entangled with me as you are quantum entangled with your friends, family, neighbors, anybody that you come in contact throughout the day. You go to the bank and that teller, you are now entangled with that teller. Now because you met that teller, you think about her and she thinks about you and you are on a quantum level. Physicists have actually scientifically proven this. And we have tons of metaphysical books that have been written by doctors, physicists, MIT scientists, MIT graduate scientists, some of them are Nobel laureates and so forth. The amount of evidence is really spectacular. But nothing is more life-defining, I'm going to say, than you actually having the experience yourself. And so that is my greatest, not only wish, because wish is wishy-washy, as Marissa Pierce says, um, hope is a beggar, is what Dr. 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 Um, Joe says that hope is a beggar because you don't want to hope. Hope is striving for. Wish is wishy-washy. We don't want wishy-washy. So my vision for you, what the end, the movie and the motion picture screen of my mind as I connect with the great I am and I connect with that beautiful, white, brilliant, loving light where you feel that unconditional love and you feel that bliss and you feel that euphoria and you have that excitement and you have that eager anticipation and you have the overwhelming gratitude it really is a beautiful sensation and as you intentionally put yourself in that place as you are in theta, as you are relaxed and as you really embrace that, then you start to pull more of that into your life. Um, and I can't emphasize enough to you who, who whatever, your, whatever your deities are, whatever your belief system is, you know, call in Jesus, you know, call in Abraham, call in, call in Father Eli, call in um, Mohammed, call in Lao Tzu, um, Buddha, whoever it is, those are all beautiful, healing, loving, compassionate, gracious energies that, that would never want harm um, to you. Now, as I say the word harm, <laughs> they're reminding me of what they revealed to me. Okay, spirit has a really funny, strange, really, really funny sense of humor. So I'm at CVS. Okay, two days. This is true. Two full days. Two days ago, I ran out of bleach. And I was, you know, having white, white towels that are snow white laundered. And so I, I never ran out of anything, but this particular time, for whatever strange reason, it caught me off guard and I used the last bit of bleach. So I thought, ah, no big deal. I'll just run over to, you know, CVS is pretty close to me. I'll just run over to CVS and get a bottle of CVS. Guess what? Completely sold out at CVS. So I said, oh, it's just this CVS, right? So then I went to um, Walmart, the grocery store. They were sold out. I went to a second CVS, they were sold out. I went to a third CVS, they were sold out. So I went to the person at CVS, and as I'm looking up and down the aisles, I said, is, uh, is there any chance that you guys, am I looking in the right place, or is there another place of the store that has bleach? He says, no, we've been out. In fact, a lot of the CVSs are out the last several weeks. People, I guess, are just sanitizing a lot more, so we've been selling out of bleach too, not just toilet paper. I said, oh my gosh, I had no idea it was going to be such an issue. Again, I had no awareness of this. So I said, um, I said, okay, well, yeah, I need to bleach my towels. So as I'm walking down the aisles and I have this awareness that my, my, um, that my, those healing energies that I talked about, you know, cause I call in all those healing energies every day and I'm talking to them and I get myself into a quiet, relaxed state and we have conversations. We have conversations in the more conscious state too, but it's primarily you know, in that deeper theta state. And so here I am just kind of thinking about bleach. Think about bleach. Bleach is a clarifying agent. It cleans and it sanitizes. It gets rid of the unwanted. It gets rid of the germs bacteria, viruses, anything unclean, unhealthy. And that's what I'm 
I'm thinking I'm just seeking the bleach. So the next revelation I had, this is right before I had the revelation of the 198, because I didn't know about the 198 yet. First, they chose to reveal to me that they were a very, very ancient, very old, um, like, energy collective where they've been around for eons and eons and eons. And they said that for me, they, they were not only a source of guidance and protection, but also tough love. <laughs> I'm like, tough love? I'm like, oh no, I don't want tough love. I'm like, why does it have to be tough love? Why can't it be easy, gracious love? I don't like to do tough love. And so I, I, I kid you not, I felt like I was back to being like five or seven years old. I'm like, no, 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 I don't want tough love. And they're like, well, no, yeah, they've had to allow you to experience tough love. You know, you know, obviously it, it hurts your heart. It hurts your emotions. But in that, in that point of pain, it gives you, it puts upon you the pressure that's necessary to strengthen you so that at that point of pain, that's where the light, if you're willing to do the work at that pain point where you have that pain, that is where the light can shine through. And now your muscles are so much stronger and you're able to transmute that pain into wisdom. And I'm like, Oh, I'm like, okay, um, that's fine, but I don't want any more tough love. <laughs> Give me the easy flowing, good feeling, you know, love, not the pain point. And I understand being in this 3D plane, there's no way we can totally eliminate pain because pain protects us. Um, I remember learning the lesson that pain protects us, not being too happy about it, um, but I had a very... Um, like clear revelation at the time. And this was probably about uh, maybe 15, 20 years ago when I realized it's like, okay, why do we have pain? Why is it that pain teaches us? Why does pain curb our behavior? Pain is there to curb our behavior so we don't harm ourselves further. Did you hear what I just said? Pain is placed for us to protect us from harming ourselves further. Maybe that's the only reason why you're supposed to be listening to this video. I really don't know. All I know is that I had had at this particular point in time, I was, you know, in my home and I was in front of my kitchen stove as it luck would have it. And I remember thinking, oh, if I, you know, because I can sense pain, if I put my hand on a hot burner where I just cook something, if I put my hand on there, I'm going to touch it and I'm going to recoil back. Why? Because I feel pain. That pain is making me go, ouch, no. So I'm not supposed to stay in the pain. What would happen if I didn't have that pain in my hand? If I didn't have the pain receptors in my hand, what would happen? What would happen is I would place my hand on that burner and it would burn my hand. It would first create first degree burns, then second degree, then third degree burns. And if I continue to keep it there, it would ultimately burn my whole hand and I would be without a hand. That is very injurious to me. Because I do have pain receptors on my hand and all over my body for that sake, I feel the pain and I recoil. For therefore protecting my hand. Yes, I got a first degree burn. I didn't have to suffer a second, a third degree, or the loss of my hand. I just suffered a first degree burn. That's what the tough love is like. It's a first degree burn. Just enough to catch your attention. Yes, it causes you pain. It might be a day or two before that first degree burn, maybe two, three, four days before it goes away. But hopefully you learn the lesson and it's there to curb certain behaviors. The same thing. Love, when it comes to love and your heart, if you are having a toxic relationship where cruel, cutting, 
putting down, judgmental, critical, um, um, controlling words are spoken at you, upon you, thrusted upon you. If mean words to denigrate you, to injure your dignity, to injure your soul, in, you know, that the intent is to harm you, to make you smaller, to make you less than, to discount you, to attempt to make you feel. No one can make you feel unless you allow them. Note that. So if you have somebody who is that type of persona, perhaps the best thing for you to do is remove yourself from that relationship. That relationship was there to show you that those boundaries are not being respected. The level of injury that that person has experienced, they are now trying to show you why their woundedness is so great that they can barely manage it themselves. They need to inflict upon you the same amount of pain so that you have a notion and a realization and an idea of how heavy their burden is and why they cannot be with you and why they are not whole. They haven't done the inner work to work through this baggage yet. And therefore they have to hurl that toxicity at you. And so what you do is then you can retreat and then it's your responsibility either to break up with them or if they abruptly break up with you, as painful as it is, it's like, you know what? This relationship isn't what I thought it was. I thought this was a loving relationship, but obviously a person that does that type of behavior, they don't love themselves. So how could they possibly love you? And if you love them, they're thinking, how could they love me? I'm broken. I'm full of all these flaws. They haven't done, they haven't integrated the dark aspects. We all have dark aspects. All of us have that shadow side. All of us have the side of us that we don't like, the, the side that is not as loving. You have to learn how to integrate those two. And it is a process. And there's some exercises that you can do. This video is not intended to go into that, but just recognize that that expression of pain that that person is inflicting upon you and wanting to harm you, because true love doesn't want to hurt another human being. It doesn't. And I will share with you, uh, you know, when I was growing up, I had two little brothers and I had one brother that's two years younger than me and one that's eight years younger than me. And both of them, my little brothers, my brother that was just two years younger than me, you know, we grew up pretty close because we were only two years apart and um, much different personality types. You know, he wears his emotions on his sleeve. He's very dramatic. He's very expressive, um, very, uh, very mercurial. I was the one who was like patient where I never got mad. I literally never got mad till I was like 15 and he was always blowing up. Anything would set him off. And um, I remember when I was really little, you know, kids, you know, when you're four five, six years old, you know, little brothers and little sisters, you know, little brothers sometimes hit little sisters and I could never bring myself to hit my little brother. And I remember on multiple occasions, my mom grabbing my brother because she would catch him hitting me. And then of course I would cry because I was, I was, it hurts when you get hit, you know, and you know, his fists were pretty solid. He was like, he was born like with little muscles. He was like a boxer to this day. He's like solid muscle head to toe. He just has that kind of Greek type of composition. Anyhow, so he, um, you know, if he, he, he would hit me in the arm or whatnot, usually it was in the arm, um, it would hurt like crazy. And I was super sensitive. I didn't realize that I was super sensitive. I just knew that it hurt. And so I would start bawling. And then my mother would grab him, pin him down. And she said she would obviously reprimand him. And then she would tell me to hit him. And I could not bring myself to hit him because even though he hurt me, I still loved him. He's my brother. So I knew how much it hurt. I couldn't fathom putting that on another human being. So I couldn't hit him. So she would spank him because I wouldn't hit him. And she would have spanked him, I think, anyway, because, <laughs> you know, that's how it was in the day. <laughs> it's funny now. It was not funny then. But it was it just made me really sad because why would why would he hit me? I would never hit him. 
And so t- for me to inflict something that is painful on another person, that's not cool. Now, one of the things that I have learned is to stand up for myself. And when something is absolutely not right, you know what? Cut. Absolute cut. This is not serving me. This is not good for me. This is this feels bad. Done. Over with. Game over. And I am gracious. I will give opportunities because I don't expect perfection out of anyone. Um, and uh, and so I have just learned that is something that you know there you have to love yourself first before you can love another person. And if another person isn't congruent in that state of being and they're showing you repeatedly that they're just going to harm you out of ignorance, out of lack of self-love, sometimes it's intentional. Some people are willfully uh, wishing you harm because of whatever's going on, then no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and take it. I'm not a doormat. So out you know, anyone who tries to take advantage. And I, and if you haven't read, if you want a book on boundaries, there's a great book. I read it years ago called um, Boundaries by Townsend and McLeod. There are two psychiatrists, psychologists, I don't really remember, but Townsend and McLeod Boundaries, fantastic book. You'll be surprised of the things that will come up in your awareness as you're reading that book and how you'll start to assert your boundaries. So call upon, call upon the council, the exegetical council, 198 exegetical council, call upon the energies of the 198. I don't think you need to, they're not big into names. Like I said, the first thing they revealed was 198 to me. The exegetical council didn't come until last night. And um, and they're there for you. They are there to guide you, protect you, and to um, just bring you more. You have all sorts of latent hidden gifts that are like dormant that they just need to be lit up and activated. And you can have one, two, or three or four at a time. It doesn't matter. If you're willing to receive it, they can be activated. And so um, I did write down, I keep on, I don't know why I can't remember the name of this. And that, thank goodness I wrote it down. But um, there's something about this temple of wisdom. It's a healing temple. And I saw a very vivid picture. Uh, and I've actually taken one person to it in a meditation. And um, I'll have to talk to Jennifer, see if maybe we can, I should do a follow-up with her to see how that's go- gone. And, and um uh, That's it. So my friends and gems, that's all I have for you today at Love and Money Secrets TV. Really everything that we have around us, everything is love. Everything that you see in your midst, in your environment, including this video, everything was a thought first, and then it comes out into the the 3D reality. And so if you have any questions, make sure you contact me right in the comments below. It's it's like a giant online class global classroom where we can interact and talk with the talk with each other irrespective of time and space country doesn't matter so i'm excited about that and if there's somebody if you if as you're watching this if somebody comes to mind that is the spirit great i am is that's your your intuition it's talking to you it's going hey you thought of this person should hear this share this with them there are nine also. And the people who you send it to who don't, don't, um, don't receive it, don't watch it, they're nines, but they're not aware that they're nines yet. So eventually in good time, they'll go back to it. They may not watch it immediately. It may la- it later activate where they're going to go, oh, you know what? I remember so-and-so sent me that video. Let me check it out now. So look up, do your own little research about um, – the metaphysical meaning of number nine, the um, sacred angel number nine and what it means, the three nines. And you, my friend, I'm so excited to inform you, you are a nine. You are a nine. 
Look at, look up on YouTube the videos about Teslas. The secrets of the universe are all found in the three six nine. The number nine includes the number three and the number six. The number three and the number six. If you look at them, those two numbers, that's three threes. If you look at the number nine, it has three three three. Three plus three is six. Plus three is nine. There's a lot of a lot of trees. So this is not a numerology class. I'm not equipped yet to teach that. Maybe that's something else that I will study. Um, I have my hands full with all the other metaphysical and neuroscience and um, so forth that I'm studying. But um, thank you for tuning in, tapping and turning on to Love and Money Secrets TV. And Take good care of yourself. And as always, like, share, subscribe, and ciao for now. Stop my live stream. <laughs> I couldn't find the red button. <laughs> That should be in my bloopers. <laughs> funny, strange, really, really funny sense of humor. So I'm.